Hi there, welcome back to Silver Lining Art. My name is Anish and today I'm going to show you how I made this painting of asters and golden rods. It's inspired by a book by Dr. Robin Wall Um But the goal of this painting was to really showcase the purple and the yellow, two contrasting colors on the color wheel uh, with a backdrop of um, combinations of all three primary colors, the blue, red and the yellow. So without further ado, let's get to the video. As I mentioned earlier, this painting is inspired by a book called Braiding Sweetgrass, written by Dr. Robin Wall Kimmerer, and specifically a chapter in that book titled Asters and Golden Rods. This is the chapter that really stuck with me after reading the book. It is extremely articulate and layered for me to adequately summarize in this video, but I'll put a link in the description below where you can have a guy read it out to you. <laughs> you can find anything on YouTube. The chapter begins with Dr. Kimmerer enrolling in college to study botany. When her professor asks why, what, she, what she wants to study, she, uh, she tells him that she wants to know why asters and golden rods look so beautiful together. Her professor immediately shuts her down tells her that she should go to art school instead. He tells her that the beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. And in science, we separate the observed from the observer. Dr. Kemmerer had been a botanist at heart since childhood, thinking of plants as her friends, family, and teachers. In science, the observer and the observed are distanced, not the way she viewed the world. Nevertheless, she mastered science, got a master's degree, got a PhD, and many professorships, and is now teaching at the same university where she initially uh, did, spoke to the professor about asters and goldenrods. During this time, she also reconnected with her Native American roots, her language, her culture. She learned that uh, there was nothing wrong with, the, uh, with her question but it was science that was inadequate. The question was too big for science to answer. Traditional knowledge helped her refine her own ways of knowing. So why do asters and goldenrods look so beautiful together? She asked again. They could have served the same function and been ugly at the same time. Turns out the beholder they care about is not us, but the bees. If you look at asters and goldenrods on a sunny day, you'll notice how busy they are with pollinator activity. As it turns out, bees, even though bees have a very different uh, perception of colors uh, than us, it's yellow and purple that they uh, perceive quite similarly to us. In humans, we have three types of cells that are, uh, that are calibrated to detect certain colors. The first one is calibrated for blue, the second for red, and the third for yellow and purple. On the color wheel, they are diametrically opposed. Just a hint of one helps bring out another in a painting. Uh, it, it, it helps increase the contrast when they're next to each other and makes them, uh, makes them appear more saturated. When you stare at a yellow block for a long time and then look at a white paper, the paper appears to be purple. The sharp contrast created by asters and goldenrods make them more attractive in a meadow together than if they were growing alone. This is a testable hypothesis. It's a question of science. It's a question of art and a question of beauty. She says, and I quote, When I stare too long at the world with science eyes, I see an after image of traditional knowledge. Might science and traditional knowledge be purple, purple and yellow to one another? Might they be goldenrod and asters? We see the world more fully when we use both. And that last line is what stuck with me. I was around 9 or 10 years old when I decided to spend the rest of my life appreciating nature, which then turned into a quest to protect and preserve it. The 10-year-old me did not know about the ecosystem services or of the delicate ecological balance that our existence depends on. 
I saw beauty, which I often chose to appreciate with the help of art. At the beginning, it was photography. I wanted to capture the nature around me and show everyone that, <laughs> that the complex lives they lead and the unique uniqueness among all living organisms around us, no matter how small or big they are. My curiosity of, uh, to nature also led me <laughs> to study um, science. I coincidentally ended up enrolling into the same college as Dr. <laughs> Robin Kemmerer did uh, when she spoke about asters and golden rods, SUNY ESF. She now is a, is a professor there. During my freshman year, I accidentally found myself in her se one of her seminars. I was really blown away by the new way of looking at the world she presented, backed by science and told through the perspective of ind indigenous knowledge and considering plants as teachers rather than subjects that you study. <laughs> And during the last two years of college, I was randomly paired with Dr. Kemmerer, who then became my academic advisor. I too learned to look at the world through science eyes, trying to protect endangered bog turtles, freshwater mussels, commercially harvested fish species, and now hemlock trees, through a constant cycle of inquiry and publication. However, I try to retain the golden rod to my aster the art and the science that helps me see the world more fully. Hope you enjoyed the video. This painting is extremely special for me. It oddly makes me feel empowered and vulnerable at the same time. A big thank you to Dr. Robin Kemmer for providing us with this unique lens to appreciate the world with. I will put the link to her book in the description below as well. If you enjoyed the video, do comment and let me know what you liked. If you have any other ideas for videos, do let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you next time.